Hey guys, my buddy Franklin stopped by with some uh, interesting stuff for you. He's going to tell you a little bit about it. All right, so today we're working on uh, Briggs and Stratton heads. This is a 61 cubic inch, technically it's a Vanguard industrial motor. Uh, we use them on surface drive mud boats, uh, duck boats, and you know stuff like that. Uh, we were just testing out uh, uh, a stock head versus what my production 308 head, my, what would be my typical hunt build. And, an and your, product, your production head is a ported head. Yes, it's ported, O-ringed, uh, copper head gaskets. Uh, they're milled to whatever specifications. Uh, uh, most of them are 55 thousandths. Um, if I put rods and pistons in, I only take about 25 thousandths off, try to keep it below that 11, and, uh, 11 to 1 compression ratio to run pump gas. Uh, the 308 cam that I run in these heads uh, is a 107 LSA. So we're able to get rid of some cylinder pressure and make up for some bottom end and mid-range torque. Uh, the other head we're working on is one of our experimental heads, and uh, it's, it has a lot of uh, different features in it, uh, a, a certain kind of stippling to keep the uh, fuel atomized and away from the walls, creating a barrier layer, and then uh, some dimpling in the chamber and in the port. So uh, what we'll do is we'll, look, we'll take a look at the heads real quick and uh, see, uh, see, what the, see what work we've done and uh, how, how they've been flow benched. and you know what what they all added up to okay first head is a bone stocker and what we did is took a wire brush and took a little bit of the carbon off that's it okay stocker valves exhaust does not have a back cut intake has back cut okay sizes is 1.45 with a back cut and the exhaust is a 1.27 so they're decent sized valves now remember it's a 60 one cubic. one cubic inch is that per barrel no no that is overall total so, so 500 cc's a piece basically 500 cc's a piece so that's a big valve considering what we do unfortunately the ports are a horrendous shape and we're going to take a quick look at them okay compared to the really seriously bent junk that i'm used to using it does have a nice updraft angle to it but then it has a sharp turn and you can see let's zoom this in a little bit we have a head of dicum and we definitely have some angle on it. Now remember, this is completely stock. Uh, to be honest, I didn't even clean the carbon out of the intake track, so I'm sure that took a couple CFM off. Okay, you can see obvious spots that the exhaust can be made better. I mean, look at the big chunk we have hanging over on the left-hand side, right? It won't take much to make this better. Okay, different view of the intake. Actually, I've, yeah, that's it. That's the intake. They're, they're so small, I mix them up. And the exhaust. Notice how similar they are to each other, okay? Another good, interesting point is they're offset on the bore a little bit. This is, this is actually what I would consider the, the center is right about here. Okay? So when I marked the air speeds, this would be the center of the cylinder. Okay, guys? And this would be the cylinder wall. Okay, guys, so this is what we got for the bone stocker. She tops out at about 127.3 CFM, which is better than I was expecting. Okay? It's really not bad. If you take a look at the, the, the curves, nice progression. Maximum lift is going to be about 0.465 on this. Okay? It actually peaked higher at 0.465 than at 5, okay? So it, at that point, it's already start to lose, lose it. The exhaust really isn't bad. I mean, take a look at the intake to exhaust ratio. The exhaust is way better than the intake, okay? We'll just go over the, the speeds quick, and then we'll compare them to some modified stuff. These are relatively low. These are nice and high. I, I like that. These are... You got high and you got a big offset between the uh, center of the cylinder and the cylinder wall, which was actually opposite of what I would have expected, right? And on your exhaust port, it's not bad up top, right? You got 321, 309, 300. That's not bad for a completely stock port. But it gets worse as we go down. Notice it's dead in the middle, completely dead on the floor. In fact, these have a... a a bad habit of sucking in broken exhaust 
parts. Yeah. <laughs> so literally, baffle parts. <laughs> they'll suck it in. It'll intake. The, the bottom of the port is so bad that it'll suck air in. Okay. Doesn't sound right, but that actually happens. Okay. Notice how much offset we have from side to side. This port could could get a lot better. All right. We're going to move on to Franklin's standard ported head. All right, Franklin, tell us about this standard head so and this, the valves. So this head was developed specifically as a hunt head to carry, you know, large loads uh, anywhere between your 22 and uh, 5,000 RPM range with a 308-107 cam. Um, I won't talk specifically about the center lines uh, uh, as far as how I advanced it to make it do what I needed to do on different size boats. Um, what so kind of the, valves are those? The, these valves are, they're both back cut, both intake and exhaust are back cut. They're 1.46 intake. And what and are one, they made of? Those are uh, uh, ink and alloy. Yeah, nice stuff. What size stems are those? Those are six millimeter stems. Six millimeter stuff. So. Let's see if we can get a little light on that. It's just a verification. All right, take a look at the. Uh, our liquid flow looks really good on the back of the bowl, right? Yeah, that was one of the problem areas I've been trying to work out to uh, help it to help it get it to splay out more and and stay off that back wall. But that's just where the, most of the velocity goes. So these these actual uh, uh, the way the the throat is, they're actually egg shaped. So you might you might not be sealed it by eye, but you know with a with a micrometer. You, you can measure it, sure. Measure. So what kind of finish is this, does this have? Is this, that, is just, this is just a cartridge roll, 160 cartridge roll finish. Um, it's, it's more, this is more for uh, EFI. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't have the rough texture like you would use for a carbureted engine to keep the fuel in suspension because the way the fuel injector is aimed, it's almost direct port. Excellent, okay. Okay, the exhaust has got a similar finish. I can see a couple of rough spots, but no big deal. Go ahead. So this the, the valve jobs I put on them. They got it's a five angle valve uh, valve cut to help radius all the edges. It's as, as circular as I can make it, or as, as round as I can make them without actually having these. These are all cut by hand. There's no machine involved. Um, they are uh, de they're deshrouded to help with the the low lift flow and to help bring torque on a little sooner. Okay, you can see the exhaust is night and day versus the stocker. And now we're going to compare the flows and see what a huge pickup it's got. Okay, this is the modified. It's got a little bit bigger valve. This is the standard one. How did he do? Plus, minus, kind of like I do. I always get a little bit of a loss right at the very low end. Plus, 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 big plus. Okay, and at point four five six. 130, just a little bit above. Overall, it's got a better curve, right? Let's do the exhaust. Okay, ported exhaust, standard exhaust. Plus, 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 plus. A winner everywhere. No, no competition. Okay, that's your standard air speeds. Standard port, not ported. Sorry for the mess. I did get mixed up on which was my center of the port. But this is straightened out now. Notice these speeds are actually very similar to these speeds. They're actually a little bit slower. Okay. This actually went down quite a bit. The roof speed went down quite a bit. But his short side radius went up quite a bit okay but he got more flow through it these are your air speeds for the stock exhaust port these are your air speeds for the modified exhaust port notice this is way better 320 321 excellent split across 330 200 we had something similar over here those are actually closer but this flowed way better Notice how dead this was in the center, right? This has got at least 172 in the center. Still dead on the floor, dead on the floor, but a lot better shape 
than the stalker, which is not really surprising. All right, Franklin, the experimental head, tell us about it. So uh, this head is th this head is actually the third head I've done like this. Um, I was playing with texturing in the chambers uh, for high compression with low lower octane fuels like 93, um, and going up with higher pressure. So this this particular head, the same way the same way it is right now, ran at 260 psi uh, cranking compression on 93 pump gas without pre detonation. Now I did some other stuff to the ports to try to fix some of the airspeed issues on the long side radius. Um, the, cha these, the, the way the chamber is done on this uh, is just a, a little bit different than the factory to help ke keep that air flowing across and keep that fuel mixed up in the chamber. And just a little bit of swirl and tumble just to try to get it to stay broken up. Um, I noticed uh, lower uh, head temperatures with the uh, dimpling. I've also do, I've done stippling on it. The stippling worked well, really well, so that's why I went to the dimpling, try to get more aggressive with it, and it worked even better. Um, I've not seen a whole lot of this in-chamber work uh, done before. It was This was strictly an experiment that, that uh, ended up working out really well. Sorry, guys, I missed this. This is actually the valve for the standard porting. Take a look at the relatively good spread of daikin we got across that valve okay now we're going to move on to the modified port with the dimples it also has a very wide little more chunky on the one side and we can see that on the bore as well we actually still have the bore set up from this last test we can show you that one you can see that little bit of chunkiness on the left, but look at how wide that is. This is, uh, I believe, a 3.5 inch bore adapter. I had uh, a customer want me to do some uh, Volkswagen stuff. He made this up, it's beautiful, and it fits these heads like a glove. These valves are also in canals. These, these come from the factory with a back cut though. Mm -hmm. They're actually a little tuliped as well. a nice valve okay you can see the chamber the chamber the port's got a, a much rougher texture where did you learn that texture from oh some guy named Charles he pretty yeah. much taught me how to do all this stuff yeah yeah that, don't listen to him all right I, I like what you wound up doing on the back of that bowl and we can see we've got we've got a nice spread of dike right across those dimples it's interesting uh, Franklin's thinking on this and uh, it seems to be a su success so far, at least on the flow bench. Looks really good here. And Franklin did uh, a nice job on the chamber. I mean, it almost looks like it was done with a machine. It's so nice and even. He did that with a little round burr. Okay, a different view of that intake bowl. Looks good. Okay, the exhaust, this is going to have your same valve job, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, the reason why I do the valve jobs this particular way, uh, I use it as like a funnel because, of course, we know intake charge comes in through the tulip on the head or on the uh, head of the valve. So, the exhaust, you're trying to push it out against something flat. So, if I can create a funnel to help get that exhaust out, we can evacuate the cylinder more rapidly. Okay, looking down down the throat of the exhaust, you can see it's it's night and day versus the stalker, and uh, we're going to get into the flows in a minute. 